the rig. First and foremost, let me introduce myself. I am Saray Maldonado and I am a career counselor at Cal State San Bernardino. And today I am also um, helping out my fellow San Bernardino Valley College students as a former, um, as an alum from Valley College. I'm very proud to be here and helping our, our students um, that, um, you know, all of us are in, in, in the universities and, and trying to advance our careers for social mobility and equal equality. So this is one of the ways that your Valley College and the Institution of Media of Arts, um, it's helping our students and our next generation of future leaders. So with that, I do want to um, make sure that I share with with you a few um, things. Let me see this. Okay. Um, I do want to say that I am also available to have one-on-ones with students, graduates or alums from Valley College that are part of the Institute of Media Arts or college or the Division of um, the Arts. And my office hours are Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 5 p.m. to 7. You can always um, send me an email and we'll set up an appointment so that we can, um, so that I can help you on the individual basis. Okay, so first and foremost, again, I mentioned the workshop is being recorded. It is a 50 minutes um, in length. For any questions, you can use the chat box to type in your questions. There's also a hand feature to raise your hand for questions. And I will pause. Um, every now and then to answer those questions and take a look at the chat box. Also for class credit, if you can type in your full name in the chat box so that I can um, share that with your instructor or if your instructor needs something else for me, I'd be more than happy to, to provide you with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I do want to also bring to everyone's attention that the feedback and the information that I will pr be providing today regarding resume, um, resumes, the information uh, came from these from this panelist right here. So as you can see, there's an oper um, HR operations and media.com. Then we have Hugo Vergara from Lionsgate and Stars. We also had Howard Lin, um, who's also working in a talent acquisition company with um, studios. And then we had Jeremy um, Chow, talent specialist at RPA. The, so all of this was, um, all of their feedback was targeting our students in the arts, entertainment industry. So I want to make sure that all of you know that this is, um, information coming from recruiters themselves, especially right now in the um, current pandemic, they want to make sure that all of you are aware of what employers and recruiters are looking for. So this is the event I attended. And so with that, I do want to um, start with what is the purpose of a resume? So Daniel, if you want to take a stab and sharing uh, what your thoughts are for what's the purpose of a resume so a resume is to like inform the employer your history with the industry you're applying for like what you're able to do or what you can do also kind of like your versatility in the field fantastic thank you thank you daniel well also, the, um, in addition to what Daniel just shared, the resume is actually your marketing tool, which is the first uh, way, the first impression you're going to have with an employer before they actually meet you in person. So how do you want to make your first impression of your, with your resume? Uh, you want to also showcase your professional and educational experiences, showcase qualities, skills, and accomplishments, in other words, this resume is going to be a living document. And today I am here to, sh um, to show you and give you some tips on how to continue developing your current resume 
and continue updating your resume as you go um, with your career development and as you complete some of the course uh, coursework and projects that you have you want to make sure that you include that in in your resume and keep your resume up to date all right so the resume writing generally is one to two pages you want to make sure that you read the instructions from any job posting that you are going to submit your resume to that they normally communicate to you it's saying please submit just one page resume so you have to make sure that you that you pay attention to those instructions because it is the one one the first i want to say is the first way that they're going to find out how can how do you follow instructions so just know that recruiters are also taking a look at that. Uh, the other piece is that if you have two pages on your resume, it's okay. As long as the employer is not requiring that you have one page, then you're fine. Also, the standard text font should be between 10 to 11, depending. Uh, we always recommend Arial or Colibri uh, font, font. And the reason for this is because recruiters if they have to squint to look to read what you have to offer in your resume they're going to move on to the next resume that they can actually read the letters so i want to make sure that this is why i'm pointing these um, items out we're going to go over also the name and contact information on every page as a running header or as a running footer also the margins um, should be even and consistent so that you don't have too much idle space on your resume. Now, we'll, we're gonna go over some of the samples. I'm gonna go over this very quickly just because sometimes they ask for a resume, sometimes they ask for a CV, but what is the difference between both? Uh, for today's purpose, we're gonna focus on the resume, uh, but I did wanna make sure that all of you are familiar with what a CV is, and it's more when you have an advanced uh, profession that you have, as you can see, publications, presentations, grants, honors, and professional academic achievements, um, any research that you have um, completed, in addition to any um, scholarly or professional memberships that you belong to. The uh, CV actually can be, depending on your career, it can be up to 10 pages. I've seen up to 20 pages on a CV. Um, so again, we're gonna focus on the resume today. And the first thing about resumes that you need to be aware of is that there are three, um, three types of resume that we recommend you should consider. Um, to see which one is the right one for you. Um, I'm also going to go over a little bit of what a federal resume and government resumes um, are, what do, what kind of resumes they expect and, and how to um, create one that is going to be federal government friendly. All right, so let's get started with the first type of resume. It is the chronological resume, which is the most popular in, in the um for everyone if you ever seen a resume typically they it's used as a chronicle resume which focuses on the work history so these um, resumes typically are used for reason call college graduates or students um, also if you have been working in the same type of industry the same type of work the same type of um so if you've been an artist and you continue to be an artist, you're just adding up to your, to your experience. So a chronological will be the best um, resume to use and showcase that. Also, this provides a list of previous employment in a chronological order. So you always wanna start with the most recent one here. And I added a sample on this side. This is, um, I think this is nice because it's one page and it, you can tell here the education is down here, but you can set up your education up here. You can, it depends on what is it that you want the employer to see at first glance. 
I do have another question. Um, how long do you think recruiters take when they're looking at your resume? What, what do you think is the time that they take when they first are taking a look at your resume? Do you want to take a shot on that, um, Daniel? Probably five minutes. Actually, your the number five is close, but it's actually seconds. It's what? three to six seconds. Recruiters, wow. when they get the resume on your in in their hands, they're glancing at. It used to be ten seconds, and now with the way the um, economy has changed, it's now three to six seconds, if that. Therefore, it is very important to have all the most important um, headings in your first page. The second page, we can figure out what else do you wanna add, but for the first page, essentially you wanna have uh, the objective, I'll be honest with you, many employers, they most likely skip the objective because they wanna see more of what have you done and how do you meet the job requirements. Um, if you have any questions, again, just um, raise your hand and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Now, the functional resume is, in my experience, has been the most popular for students because most students either are changing their career, this is probably their first or second career, or you're brand new into the industry that you're going into and you have been working in a total different industries. One example is if you're working in, in retail all through your college years, but you're actually going to um, school to become an artist or a film producer, it's the, the experience is, there's transferable skills, but the experience is not within the same industry. So that's where the functional resume comes in handy because it focuses on skills and professional experiences. That is the primary focus. And again, when you're changing careers, so you have gaps in employment, a minimal work history, um, or you may be overqualified. Again, this is more uh, mostly new graduates with no experience in the field and you want to work now in this new field, notice that the focus on the functional resume, it's more on what are your skills and your core competencies related to the industry that you're going into. This is where you want to add, I mean, this is core competencies, but you can go ahead and change this heading to say related related accomplishments or related experiences. And then you're gonna go ahead and just showcase, if you notice, there's a few bullets in here that captures basically what you have done, not just in school, but also if you volunteered, anything that has to do with your, um, with your experience in transferable skills, leadership. Most employers are looking for the core competencies they look for and they are leadership, team player, how, where did you gain your customer service? Also that you are, um, if you have done some research, you know, this is where you wanna put, you know, conducted research and whatever that may be. And then you add in here the reason for the research and what was the, um, the result of that. So you wanna make sure that you include that in here. If you notice on this functional resume as well, your professional profile on the bottom, if this is, there's no job, there's no job descriptions under any of these because this is, this person has done the same thing in all these jobs. All of that is cup, captured here. So it doesn't sound repetitive. Um, and notice the education is at the bottom technical skills. If your education is the one thing that this employer is expressing that it's one of the number one requirements, I encourage, I encourage you to put education to the very top before your core competencies. All right, we're going to move on. And then 
Last but not least, the combination resume incorporates the functional and chronological resume. And, and I use this um, example just to um, give an idea of how it's just organized, the headings, and it's just very chronal in a very chronological order. But it also has a little bit more of, you know, your accomplishments, where you're at in your career. Your work experience is again in a chronological order, starting with the most recent and going to the latest. Now, one question, how far back should you go in your work experience? How many years back would you say? I think about again, five again. That? Oh, sorry. About five years again. Um, actually, it can be five years or depending on how, how long ago you've been in the industry, five to 10 years. Anything beyond 10 years, it's way too much that you can include some of the um, information on the core competencies of something that you probably did 15 years ago. And as you recall, I mentioned your resume will be a living document. So every time you do a, every time you volunteer, every time you um, get a part-time job or you are part of a huge um, project at school that you feel proud about or that you were recognized for, that's what you wanna make sure that you include there. Anyways, um, so, so here I'll move on to the federal resume. Actually the federal resume are you'll be surprised how many employers in the government are actually interested in bringing um, creatives into the workforce, especially in these, um, in these times of work, um, the, the market, the way the labor market is, they are looking for a lot of communications, social media, film, production, because all of that are transferable skills that you can help the government um, communicate better with, with our um, country. So the federal resume, it's really interesting because when you go into the um, USA Gov for when you enter your, your profile, it actually has a really nice resume building integrated in the USA jobs. So it's not like you have to like send them a new, a new resume with what they're looking for, but you can actually create your resume through their, um, their website. And then from there, you can download it and save a copy from there. I always recommend to do that because that's the, um, they, they prompt you with what you need to include in each um, heading. So again, think about those federal government jobs um, as you start planning your career path. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and now go into, I'm not sure what, oh. We're gonna go into the anatomy of the resume. So there's all these headings that you can have, but these are the headings that are most important to have on your first page, if all possible. So your heading, of course, your name, your um, all the headings, we recommend for them to be as size 16 and bold. They can be all capital letters. The summary qualifications, instead of, um, instead of an objective, I, I would rather, I would prefer to see your qualifications in bullet styles because I can remember the three to six seconds that they're glancing at your resume. You want to make sure that you have, that what's gonna stand out in those three to six seconds. So again, there's your education. So we're gonna go over each of these headings and I'm gonna point out what's important of each heading to make sure that you include. For creatives, I included this right here, the, sorry, the group and solo exhibitions, because that is particularly, particularly important for all of you to make sure that you have this area 
included. Any certifications, I mean, you have a lot of equipment, a lot of software that you are also utilizing to complete projects and, and to maybe at, at school or at work or where you do your um, internship. And any additional information that you wanna share. So we'll go, we'll go through each of the headings. References, at the end of your resume, you want to put references upon request. You do not want to include resumes in your resume because references are offered once the employer asks for them because they're considering you for the next step of their hiring process. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started with the heading. Um, and I'm gonna show you all this because I, I want to make sure that all of you are aware that employers do pay attention to how you have your, um, your email address, if it's a professional email address, if it's your student email address. If you are not looking at your student email address as often as you should, I want to say, and I want to recommend to please include the, the email address that you look at and view on the daily basis. Also that your phone number is up to date. I want to say that people change their phone numbers every three to six months for one reason or another, and they forget to update it on their resume. So when they are trying to get a hold of you, the, the phone number is not going to work for the recruiter. So that's one reason for them to say, okay, I can't get a hold of the person. I'm going to move on to the next candidate. And what happens is you miss the opportunity of that interview. Um, now, if, they, if the recruiter really wants to get a hold of you, obviously they're going to email you as well. Therefore, your email, you want to make sure that it's a professional email address. If you notice the bottom one has a LinkedIn account. If you currently have a LinkedIn account, I encourage you to include it because this is another way that you can actually showcase your portfolio. If you decide that you want to include every project in LinkedIn, there's a space for you to include all of your projects that you can showcase and that could be your professional portfolio and everything's online. And it's, of course, it's free. There's gonna be a workshop on LinkedIn in the future, so keep an eye on that. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right. The next piece is education. This is one of the um, one of the ways that I've seen resumes AA in marketing or AA in liberal arts, and you know when expected to be um, to graduate, and then the college is written as a you know just the acronyms. Then you include your GPA. We want to. Inc I encourage you to include the. It's an associate's of arts degree and then if you your concentration should be right next to it your concentration whatever concentration that is then you put it right next to this and you want to spell out the name of your college here on the expected what's important is that you actually type in or spell out the the month when you expect to grad to graduate also um, refrain from putting spring or summer or winter it's best that you use the month also your gpa um, if you're going to include your gpa make sure that it's 3.5 or above otherwise we recommend for you not to include it for for the purpose of your resume at this point so this is the important piece when you're putting in your information in your education. Um, so we'll move on to the next. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the work experience. So work experience, again, this is if you have been working in the industry, but also it's very important if you have been working in an area that you have the most transferable skills for the new job that you're going to um, apply or internship that you demonstrate you know 
exactly what you did. So here is a weak example. So a craft artist and then your description, you just go, oh, and in the company, you abbreviate the name of the company. If you see here, create crafts for customers, okay, that's, um, that's not telling me anything about what you can do. Um, also, if you notice here, the month is written in a number. We recommend that you actually spell it out. So here's what I would recommend for you to do is this right here should be all spelled out, the name of the company. The month should be also, you can abbreviate the month if you want to, but this is what we, how we recommend that you add your, um, your dates. Now, take a look at the, um, the description of this craft artist. Create functional or decorative objects by hand using a variety of methods and materials. Now, this sounds more descriptive than create crafts for customers. And I'm also going to go ahead and show you where you can, how you can learn to get these descriptions where you are not struggling on creating those for your former work experience or again, going into the classroom projects that we just discussed. All right, so here's some of the things that I would recommend from ONIT. Um, so if you're not familiar with ONIT, I will go ahead and introduce you to ONIT. It will be your best friend ever because here are some of the descriptions for someone in film. This is how you would um, describe some of the, um, the tasks and, and, wor and work that, you, that a person in film would most likely be doing. Here's another example. Then here's for a game designer you know, create core game features, including storylines. So notice the difference in the way that they sound more descriptive. Um, for yourself, you also want to make sure that you customize it as much as you can. If you have um, the name of the project, you know, share the name of the project and what it did for, what was the purpose and where did it end up? What did that, if you create a film, was it, for training, was it for, what was the purpose of, of that creation? Planning or, so the, here's for curators. So again, all of this comes from, from ONIT. And I think I, um, if we have time, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go ahead and just go into ONIT so that I can show you how to find those descriptions. What are, what are my transferable skills? This is one of the questions that all of us, when we are in school, <laughs> including myself, I do recall thinking of what are my, what are transferable skills? Um, and I wanna make sure that you're very familiar of what those are and what, what, how you can actually utilize and leverage your transferable skills into your future career. So personal skills. There's your communication, problem solving, you know, critical thinking, technology, your bilingual, and then personal qualities. It's a little different. If you notice, this is more like your personality. This is more like, okay, this person is very motivated. They're, you know, they're energized. They always take pride and they have, you know, integrity. They're very productive. Um, they're adaptable. Right now, the word of personality, and I should include it here for the next um, workshop, is agility. Is how agile are you to change, to embrace change, and be successful during that change? And as we, as you all can see right now, is that's a lot of us had to take some agility out of our uh, toolkit to manage the transition of virtual uh, or remote um, classes or remote um, presentations because of the pandemic. So all of us had to, you know, get that agility that we have in order for us to continue 
successfully providing education to our students and also for our students to also have access to many of the resources and services that we offer. All right, so does anybody have any questions on these transferable skills? All right, I'll go ahead and move on to the next. Uh, let's see. All right, so one, it's very important that you demonstrate your skills, your transfer, transferable skills. Many times we have resumes where you're telling someone, I'm highly, um, an example here is, you know, I'm highly organized. All right, well, show me how, what is it, how is it that you're organized? What have you done in the past that demonstrate how organized you are? So to give you an example, you can use, again, one of your projects that you completed with a team or on your own, and you want to start with an action verb that would potentially read in a, read in a different way than just highly organized. You can start with highly organized, the film production of the Fox Theater for 2021, and got whatever it is, whatever results, got like so many people attended. Or it was featured as a, uh, a winning award for students in film. So that makes a, uh, that demonstrates how is it that you're highly organized. And also, if you did the project as a team, it also will demonstrate that you are a team player. So you can even start your transferable skills to um, start with the action verb, collaborated with professor, so and professor from this arts college to research where creative artists are finding employment or finding uh, mentorship or finding internships. This is what I'm talking about, so those type of projects they they are, you can use that as your transferable skills. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and also just share with you one way to also just remember how to write your descriptions is use the STAR method where you kind of said, okay, this is the situation, the task, the action, and what was the result? And it's just one statement, again, stating the situation, the task, action and what was the outcome. Um, okay. Next, you want to identify, I always recommend your top five organizations that those are your target organizations. Those are the companies that you have been thinking, you know what, if I end up working there, or do an internship in this organization, let's say Google, Facebook, or Spotify, Lionsgate, any of those um, organizations, then you want to make sure that you research them and that you find those positions that they have so that you can tailor your resume according to their mission and vision, according to the qualifications of the job, what experience they require or prefer, and of course, what is the education requ required for this, um, for this position. It is important for you to be in the know that there is a, a software that HR utilizes, and it's the, um, my, my mind escapes the name of the um, software, but it picks keywords from your resume to match the job posting that the organization posted. And if there's not enough keywords that match the job description with your resume, then that resume is not going to be, it's not going to be in the hands of a recruiter. It's just gonna go in a pile that was received and it's just gonna go what you would call in a black hole. Um, 
Okay, so this is why we um, encourage you to do all these research before you actually go forward with submitting your resume. And again, you follow these steps, you will have the higher probability of getting the interview, which is the goal of your resume. <clears throat> okay, we're going to move on. And here's the ONIT slide that should have been earlier, but this is the, the website. It's a free website and it's actually updated very often. On the very top right here is where you want to type in the occupation. And when you type in the occupation, then this is going to bring up everything this person in this occupation, every task this person will do, and it will describe it in a very professional manner. So I encourage you to use this when you're writing your job descriptions, especially if you say, okay, you know what, I was working in a restaurant or a retail place and I was just a crew. Even that you can type in here to just get a better idea of what a crew member does in a restaurant or in retail or any of those. Also, you can you can type in your 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 degree here. For example, you can put in creative or artist or film producer, and it will bring up those type of jobs and related jobs, which is even um, some of the job occupations that you would probably think oh, I I never even I don't even know what that what that person would do. Well, this will help you with that. Um, it also provides what are the te technologies, um, the skills that this occupation would need, what education, credentials. It even has, you know, what wages and employment trends are for that occupation that you just selected. And if you notice right at the bottom, you can apply for jobs through here. So I encourage you to explore this website. And again, it will be your best friend because it makes writing your resume much easier. All right, so here uh, I brought this up because the exhibitions, I want to make sure that you as creatives, that you have exhibitions included. So notice here on this, um, this resume, the exhibitions are in here and the way they're just simply written out. Whatever you did in this exhibition, this is where you want to either share it in your summary of qualifications or in the job, uh, some of the descriptions in here. But if this was a functional resume, then you would share all of the um, perhaps leadership experiences that you gained when you were doing this and you write it under the functional resume so that you can demonstrate what you the experience you gained through the exhibitions and how were you um, invited to that or was it yourself? Is this um, something that you do as a freelancer? You know, there's so many things that you wanna, that you want to make sure that the employer is aware of what your capabilities are in your experience. So again, you're not telling them, this is one way of you demonstrating that you have the experience of these exhibitions. It could be solo or it could be in groups. All right, we're going to go to the next slide. Anybody has questions here? Notice the skills here for creatives. So think of every software that you have utilized or currently are utilizing or getting a certificate on so that you can make sure that you include it because employers these are some of the areas they also pay attention to because the more certifications you have or the more knowledge you have in the software for the industry you're going for, then the employer has less time to waste in training you in those, um, in those, um, in those areas and those softwares. So you will, you will be more qualified than someone who didn't have Adobe Photoshop, for example. Especially, um, again, as creatives, there's a lot of um, software that employers want you to have already. So you wanna make sure that you let them know that you already have it so that you 
can say, hey, I'm just ready to go. All right, so we're coming towards the end of this um, resume workshop. Here's some of the additional information that you, if you wish to add. Again, if this goes on your second page, that's fine. Um, but I encourage you to include any honors and awards that you have received, especially if that award was related to your school um, a project that you um, participated in, or you were recognized by your professor. These, this is where you wanna put that information as well. Because what you're doing with your resume is you are communicating to the employer, here's just a, a, a snapshot of everything I've done so they can see what you have done, but also they see the potential that you have, not just to perform the job that they're, uh, they posted and they're considering you for, but the potential of becoming or growing within the organization. You know, you want to demonstrate that, hey, I'm here, I'm here to, to, to be part of your organization and here's what I have to bring and contribute to your efforts. Your mission is to engage with the community in this gamification format. And I have done gamification projects. I am the person that can do this job for you. But again, it all starts with a resume. And so this is why it's very important to include. And nowadays, there's another heading that I heard about, and I, I would like to hear from, from your side. You know how we have here hobbies and interests? Well, the other heading that I just heard about is the side hustles. Like this is what you do on the side, and it could be that you volunteer for Loma Linda and you help students with creating arts or crafts. You know, that's something that you can put in there. Okay, this is something that I do on the side but it's also related to the type of work that you are now moving towards. I know we have new new guests. Does anybody have any questions thus far? The, the workshop is coming towards the end, but it is being recorded, so I will be sharing it with your professors so they can, um, so that you can view it yourself, okay. So your references, I want to express the importance of having your references ready in one single page. So the same heading that you put on your resume is the same heading you're gonna use for your references. And then three references or five references. Can someone um, share what's preferable by recruiters, three or five references? Does anybody want to take a shot and just? Three. Three. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Three, and I'll share with you why. I was, prior to coming to the higher education world, I was a recruiter for 10 years. And I can tell you that as recruiters, when we are considering a candidate, we are calling the references. We're calling them, we're making sure that those references come back positive and that this person, whatever they put in the resume, whatever they shared in the uh, interview, that it is information that is accurate and that's gonna come from your references. Um, but many times, if I am the recruiter and I have to call all these references for the candidates, some candidates will turn in six to 10 references. And trust me, as a recruiter, we are like on the go. So if we see that, we're like, okay, you know what? Let me have the other resume that has three references and I'm gonna call these three. So out of the three, if we get two positive ones and perhaps the third one has not called us back, we're okay with the first two. We just wanna get at least two positive references. And when I say positive, I am also sharing with you all that your references, make sure that you call them, 
make sure that you let them know what position you're applying for. In fact, it is recommended that you send them a copy of your the job description that you applied for and a copy of your resume because these references can be professors or your colleagues that maybe you worked with them two or three years ago. They're not going to remember everything that you want them to share with the employer. So it is necessary that you contact them and say, hey, this is um, what I would like. Um, I, need your, uh, I need your permission to be your dentist a reference. It's for this. And from the reference, you need their name, their professional title, company name, their company mailing address, phone number, and email address. Because they're going to try from every which way to get a hold of, the, of your reference. And I can express how many times we've called references and they did not know the person. And so that's unfortunate. Either they had the wrong number or I'm not really sure what, what, what happens there, but that can, you know, eliminate you from that position. So it's important that you, that you have this, um, in mind and that your references are always a separate page. I encourage you to start creating that because the one thing you want to do is you want to be ready for that opportunity when it knocks on your door. And you know how they're always, you always hear classmates saying, oh my goodness, he was so lucky. She was lucky. Look, she got that job or he got that internship. It's preparation meets opportunity that equals luck so the luck is you being prepared so when that opportunity knocks on your door and they ask hey do you have your resume we are considering you for this role but we need your resume to send it to hr the one thing you want to say is yes of course here it is where do i send it where do i submit it okay any questions? All right, we're gonna go to the next. Do we um, have any uh, open internships right now? Actually, we do. We do have some internships. Um, and I know those of you that are here in, the, um, in this uh, workshop, please, 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 please schedule time so that if you're interested in a workshop, I'd be more than happy to share with you what internships we have, with whom, and what they're looking for, and also to help you tailor your resume um, to align it with what what the what the um, um, what the employer is looking for. But I do have a, at least I think I want to say like three internships right now available, and we're looking for students. We're looking for students to um, to take on. This, um, you know, this challenge of going out there and learning something new and having your skills and, and definitely developing your experiences. An internship is the best way. It, it, it leads, it's the, um, it has been researched and proven that most graduates, if they had an internship, they're the most likely to get the, get a, um, land a career sooner than others that didn't complete an internship. Again, these are some helpful tips. I think I, I went ahead and shared these as I was going through this through the um, through the um, the slides. So again, keep your statements short and concise. Put your strongest statements or qualifications at the very top, which I put it down here just to point out that if you put it at the very bottom, we already read all this, but this was at the very end. So we're, we probably stop reading right here. And then it's like, okay, well, what's next if we have time? So again, this summary qualifications will go at the very top of your resume. Okay, so here's I wanted to um, just take a few minutes, and I don't know, I'm gonna, it, actually, I don't have um, time to go over the cover letter, but that's something I can share with all of you. Um, we're, we're, I only have five more minutes left, but I'm gonna skip through here, and I'm also going to um, skip through this one. 
And I want to thank each of you for joining me today. And I'd be happy to take any questions. Also, um, my office hours are via Zoom or telephone, whatever is convenient for, for you. And it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 5 to 7. However, if you are not available these days and these times, I'd be more than happy to, you know, you know meet with you at a convenient mutual time. And I also want to share with all of you that Creative Careers Readiness Series um, in two next, so we're going to have these workshops every other Thursday. So the next workshop is going to be focused on internship search. So that's another, if you can start working on your resume, um, well, maybe let, let me ask you all this. How many of you feel confident that if the recruiter that you've been waiting for is now in front of you and is asking you for a resume. How many of you feel very confident to say, okay, I'll, I'll send it to you within the next 24 hours? Not 24 hours. You would have like to, maybe. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, the reason why I asked that question is after this resume, after this resume workshop, do you, okay, uh, let me go back to the Daniel. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and answer the question from the chat. Can you please get a picture of what sample resume should look like? Confident, okay. Yes, let me go back to the slides here. I also have sample resumes that I can email all of you. And to be honest with you, the resumes we recommend that you use Word documents instead of, um, let me see, I'm trying to see how this is gonna take me back. Go back to my slides. Okay, I'm gonna just click really fast on these slides only because I want to show some of the resumes that one of the um, one of you asked about. So here's a resume that you would say, okay, you know what? I am happy and I feel confident that my resume looks clean, professional. There's no idle space. You know, sometimes you see a resume where all of this side is all white and there's just this idle space that you could have used for something else. Um, so for the person that asked me the question, this is the chronological resume. Also, this is the functional resume. And then you have the combination resume that includes, that incorporates functional and chronological. And again, I am more than happy to send you those, um, all three samples for each uh, resume with the instructions on how, what is, which, what head, what you should include in each of the headings. Um, and when you revise your res, if you, when you revise your resume or you create your resume now, leading towards the career that you want to land an internship or volunteer opportunity. That's, those are the times that I can help you with your, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So I'll be more than happy to meet with you and just take a look at what you have right now and start building your resume to when you feel, hey, you know what, this is really speaking of who I am. This is really showcasing of all of my accomplishments, where I've been, where I'm at, and where do I want to go career, you know, as far as your career journey. And so my goal is to prepare you as there's no, there's no over preparation. That's what I always say. So I, oh, I do want to make sure that you are prepared and that when you apply for a job or an internship, that the employer would 
find no reason for not for not calling you it's like this is the this is the person that we want because you're showcasing who you are in one piece of paper and imagine when you going for the interview you're pretty much going to they already have your resume so that's another uh, workshop that we're going to go over is how do you use your resume through when when you're in an interview um does that answer the question for so if you can go ahead and add in, in the chat box the the um your email address or you can email me email me um i can send you then these uh these guides oh yes paul was Yes, and, and um, yeah, sorry for, yeah, sorry for being late, but uh, um, just uh, it's yeah, okay. the, those um, yeah, it kind of it kind of helps, but uh, uh no, because I took a uh, a work a workshop like five years ago on how to um, uh, make your resume look for uh, for the movie industry with the if you have no experience in the movie industry. And uh, I was told to, um, like, uh, ha we had to uh, write, uh, we had to convince the, uh, as to, uh, we have to convince uh, whoever we're, uh, whichever Employer. company you want to join that, uh, that, are, that our customer service skills can, uh, that our skills, what well, our experience can match what, uh, what they need. Right, so we you talked know, about uh, the transferable the skills. So yeah. it, when you're teaching careers or it's the first time you're diving into that type of industry, you're moving from one career to a new career, then you want to leverage all of your transferable skills into your new career, such as customer service, leadership, leadership, critical thinking. These are the core competencies that according to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, they conducted this research where they found out from asking so many number of employers, what are the top core competencies that you look at when you are recruiting? And they came up with, of course, technology, critical thinking, career management, and I'm going to be adding those core competencies on the following um, workshops so that all of you can get acquainted on what employers consistently keep saying, this is what we look for. And so when you mentioned that you're going into the film industry and you haven't done work in that industry, but you perhaps definitely want gone to school and you've done some, some of the uh, work or projects in, in the classroom, the functional resume is the best type of resume to utilize because it focuses more on your core competencies. And here you can change this heading to say related experiences. And then you express everything you've done, even if you worked 14, 15 years ago, and you still have that customer service or that project that you completed, you can add it here because then your experience, your work experience is just going to be listed with the name of the company and the uh, dates, but these could be, you know, retail, customer service, it could be something other than the industry that you're looking for. But all of your description of why you qualify for that role, it's gonna be in here. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna, if you can do the, um, I also share this own it, uh, Paul, which is a free website where you can type in your occupation here. Let's say you can put film in here and you will be able to see, actually, you know what, let me see if I can go there. I'm going to stop sharing so I can share the own it since 
you all have time and you're still here with me, I'm gonna share my screen so that I can show you how this ONID works. Can everyone see the screen with ONIT? Let me see. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, here you go. So again, this is a free website and I think it's also in, in some of the resources that are offered in the transferring career department. But I was sharing earlier, if you click in here, let's say you click arts, you're gonna get a wealth of occupations that are related to the arts. When you see these little sunshines, this bright outlook, that means that these positions are in high demand right now. This is, this is a website that is kept up to date. And so what I recommend when you're writing your job descriptions is that you type into the, um, the occupation of the internship or career that you're most likely interested in. And it's like, okay, how do I, what do these people do? It will give you like all the tasks the person does, the technology skills that you would need for that to perform that job, the knowledge, which is all aligned with everything that you do as creatives, skills, abilities, the work activities that you're gonna be doing should you be in this occupation. And I wanna show you the rest of, um, I'm gonna go to a little bit lower here. Here's the education. So most, most people that are in this occupation, 51% of them have a master's degree, 32% have a doctorate degree, and then have a bachelor's degree. Go all the way to the bottom, and if you say, you know what, uh, let me see this other, what do this person do, what does creators do? And you can click on that because it's related occupation. But this is the other nice thing about this website is, let's say you decide once you graduate, you're moving out of state and you wanna know more or less, what is the average salary in that state? Mm, let's go to, let's go to Hawaii. So now with, when you click there, you're just gonna, Take a, take a look and see what's the the average salary for someone in art, drama, music, teacher, post-secondary. This is the average for the entire United States. This is what they would pay, the medium pay for someone working in Hawaii. I'm going to show you the difference between Hawaii and California. See the difference in salary? Now let's go to New York. So I know the, um, the other piece too is that when you graduate, if you say, I'm gonna go to grad school and I'm gonna go to grad school outside California, you wanna go to New York or the other place that you feel is going to enhance your career, this is what you wanna take a look at. You know, where am I gonna get the most for my degree? And then um, you decide to come back to California, then you have even more experience and you're gonna get paid even more because now you're coming back from New York with all this experience in your industry. And now you're gonna be at this level or even closer to here. And you can get more information of the, you can get more specific in the locations. And at the very bottom, you can start looking for jobs. So again, this is the rapid growth for some of those positions. And you can even type in here, let's see, I think you put in graphic designers. And you can have a blast just looking into this, everything that, so what I was sharing earlier when you're typing your, when you're creating your job descriptions, this right here will help you put together a professional job description because it, it's very specific and to the point and concise and you can add 
a little bit something else in here that customizes of what you actually did yourself that will make it more uh you can individ individualize it by adding like the name of the project or the name of something that you actually completed like the name of the story something along those lines all right any questions Okay, so we um, are actually at the end of our workshop. I do want to thank each of you for joining me. And uh, one of the things I'm gonna show one more time is the, um, the future workshops that are coming up. So since I have um, since I have a little bit more time, does anybody want to share like one thing you would you learn from this workshop that you would either change from your resume or you know okay you know what I've been I think I'm gonna have I'm gonna have that as my well I learned what a functional resume is and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna start using that now on from now on. Perfect. And, and uh, making sure I have my uh, references uh, prepared and contacted and ready to ready to uh, ready to recommend me. Perfect. Thank you so much. And again, I I just want to reiterate that I'm I'm here to further assist you. And I'm gonna just go back to my email address for those of you that just joined us. Is anybody, um, I just shared er earlier too that we have employers looking for interns. So perhaps, um, I don't know why it's not. <laughs> so again, I, I definitely want to make sure that I, that I share with all of you that we do, we can help you with identifying the internships or help you with how to apply for the internship um, and have your, your resume ready for that internship or a volunteer opportunity that you're contemplating, um, a part-time job that you have been thinking of applying, but you're still like, okay, I'm not ready to send my resume. This is a time when I, I will, be available to further assist you on the one-on-one -on -one basis. And so here's my, uh, my office hours. And again, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And, oh, that's right, I put my email address in here. So if you want to go ahead and take a picture or write down my email address so that you can email me and we can come up with a mutual day and time to have a Zoom meeting or a telephone meeting, um, I do want to ask that when, you, when we're meeting for your resume that you email me your resume ahead of time before we meet so that I can have more time to review it and then we can spend more quality time as I'm reviewing the resume with you. All right, that sounds good. Okay, well, I want to say thank you to you all for joining me today. And we will see you on October 22nd, which will be internship workshop. Thank you. All right, take care. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you for joining me this evening. Good night.